So today we will, we will be installing OpenWRT on a VirtualBox machine. Uh, so a couple things we need to take care of first is to download VirtualBox, get that all set up. In this case, I've already completed that. So we will go ahead and download the image for OpenWRT. And we'll go ahead and navigate to that site, download that software. We'll go ahead and do a wget, and we'll download the image. And we've already decompressed the image. And we'll go ahead and open the directory where the image is located. And we'll go ahead and do a conversion on that image here with the VBox manage command. <clears throat> And I just have to get the name corrected here. It appears that the name was incorrectly spelled in the initial command. Not a big deal. We'll go ahead and adjust it now. This will give us an image that we can use on our VirtualBox machine. It's actually a virtual disk image. And here we can see that the virtual disk image has been created. Might have to complete uh, some additional commands if you're having any additional issues with the image creation for VirtualBox. Next, we will go ahead and set up the network adapters here. Oh, my apologies. We'll go ahead and set up the virtual box here. Choose Linux for the type and then we will choose Linux 64 bit. And knock that down to about 512. Should be more than enough memory. We'll use an existing hard disk that we just created. Now when I get navigate to that directory, it's not going to pop up. For some reason, when the image was created, the image never created with the .vdi extension, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust the extension here on that file. And we'll go ahead and make that adjustment. As you can see, the initial file didn't have a .vdi extension. So we'll go ahead and add that now. And when we go to add the virtual disk, we should be able to find it in our list. Here we are. 
we'll go ahead and create that virtual machine here now. It's recommended to make sure that you have the disk image in the permanent location before you link it to your VirtualBox machine. Otherwise, afterwards, it may complain about issues indicating the initial or original location um, of the file is no longer available. So, next here, we'll go ahead and set up our network interfaces. And here we've created a virtual network interface that will be connected to our main Ethernet adapter for our virtual box. Go on down a network. We'll set this to host only adapter, and uh, you can see our virtual adapter has been selected. And although the settings here looks to be okay, Ethernet one is going to be set to NAP, and that's going to be adapter two here. I'm just going to set this to NAP. And then Ethernet number three. We're going to go ahead and set that to a bridged adapter. And it already appears to be pointing at the correct network interface. All right, so everything here looks to be good. If you need to set your permissionless mode to allow all, we can do that at this time. Unless you have any specific reason to do that, we can go ahead and just leave that to deny. So everything here looks to be good. So far, so good. back to the host network manager And we'll make sure that the IP is set accordingly here. 192.168.56.1. And um, for some reason here, I was not able to set the IP version 6 to nothing. And then the prefix length to zero it would not save. I tried this quite a few times as you'll be able to see here in the video. And I tried it quite a few times. I restarted the virtual box and uh, still was not able to configure the IP version 6 interface appropriately so I just left it with the 64-bit um, IP version 6 address 
I just left it there. still uh, not allowing me to save it. So really at this point I just decided that it's okay for the IP version 6 address to be set up. We're not going to be porting anything over to this interface, uh, so we will just leave it as it is if it provides or causes any further issues in the future. Uh, we'll probably just go ahead and disable the IP version 6 interface. But for this time we'll go ahead and just boot the uh, virtual box up here. Well, I guess first we're going to go ahead and just double check all of our network adapters here that we've already set up. So everything here looks to be set up appropriately as requested by the tutorial. And in just a moment we'll go ahead and get the virtual box booted here in just a moment. Go ahead and boot up the virtual box now. And here in just a moment, we should have an interface. Um, I do believe we will have to set up. SSH, and then we will actually have to install Lucy, which is the interface for the 
open WRT software. So here, we're going to go ahead and get everything set for SSH to be able to run on the box. And it does appear that the network configuration so far looks good. We're going to go ahead and grab the network.lan.ip address field just to confirm here what we're looking for is set to the appropriate address here And we can see here that the field is set to the appropriate 192.168.1.4. Address. Uh, so here's where we're going to have to SSH into the router. So we'll go ahead and make sure everything is set to allow incoming connections. And we'll use the UCI set network LAN address command. We'll set that to 192.168.56.2. We'll go ahead and run a UCI commit command and then we will reboot. Once the virtual box comes back up here, and it should just take a moment to do that, we'll be able to SSH into the box and complete the following steps here. So once again, we'll go ahead and make a copy of this. We're going to go ahead and open up a new terminal. We'll go ahead and SSH into the box using the root user here. So yes, we'll go ahead and correct that uh, root at 192.168.56.2. And it appears that we're actually inside the OpenWRT shell now. So we'll go ahead and post paste in our configuration file, hit enter, and it looks like everything was taken successfully. Now we'll go ahead and write these changes to check if any of the settings uh, were loaded correctly. 
Uh, so we'll go ahead and use the UCI space changes command, and we could see here that the um, network management interface uh, sets a bridge protocol static. Uh, everything looks to be uh, set appropriately here. And we can see that just by comparing the two here. All right, so it does appear that everything has been set up just as the tutorial um, requested. So we can go ahead and move on to step number five here, and we'll run a UCI commit and reboot command. Once the router is back up and running, we'll go ahead and SSH back into the terminal. And then we'll be able to go ahead and set the rest of the configurations that we need to set. And here, if we scroll down, be able to copy that configuration We'll go ahead and run a OPKG update, so this will bring our package management system up to date. And it does appear that we have uh, internet connectivity, since it's actually able pulling down um, packages from the packet manager. So, all well so far. It looks like the router is working accordingly. Now we'll set the scale, screen the scale here so we can see the screen a bit better. And uh, once we scroll on down here just a bit, I can go ahead and copy the rest of that configuration on over to the router as well. And that should be just about it. Um, all we have to do now is install Lucy, and Lucy is the uh, graphical user interface, or the web graphical user interface. So we'll go ahead and run the installation for that right now, and we should be set to go here with the installation of OpenWRT on it to a virtual box machine.
right, so Lucy looks to be installed, and we'll go ahead and navigate to the web GUI here, and here we are, looks like we are set to go, we'll go ahead and configure a password here for our router, and that pretty much wraps this video up, there's um, nothing really else here that we need to do get to get the router to, you know, to run pro appropriately everything is up and running at this point so if you'd like to watch any further videos in regards to the virtual router please um, take a look at any of my other videos here in my